been thinking a lot lately about words such as inspiration, motivation, commitment, courage. Big words. Big words, I think, it, they get used interchangeably a lot and take on a lot of different meanings. Uh, I, th- I think it was Seth Godin said, you know, it, you know language is, uh, or the English language is um, like amazingly imprecise. <clears throat> he was talking about the word quality and how that gets used. And as a project manager, you know, quality is, uh, you know, quality is, is supposed to be differentiated with grade. You know, quality is about meeting your scope of work, specifications, and stuff agreed upon. Grade is sort of the the level, uh, how shiny it is, you know, ultimately. And that's kind of what he was talking about. And, and I think those words also get used interchangeably. And people take very different positions on those words. You can read, you know, the latest kind of philosopher King's idea that if you've got to go out and find motivation or you've got to go out and find some kind of inspiration, then you're not going to put out great work. You, you may not just, you just may not put out anything. You just simply are collecting uh, ideas from, from other folks in your head, or, you know, maybe you're writing them in a journal or, um, you know, you know, notebooks or, you know, whatever, whatever it is you're collecting or the sort of vessel that you collect those things in. And commitment is, well, committed to what, right? Do you like my Christmas bell, by the way? Um, you know, what are you committed to? Are you committed to getting inspired and, and motivated as a little bit of, of starting point of an idea to start a project that you've got in your head and it's, it's a little bit of a push and then you get going, maybe? Are you committed to a very defined product, you know, piece of work, whatever, and you've got an actual schedule You've got an actual approach. You've got an actual process to get there. Uh, or are you just committed to, again, kind of listening and reading and, and uncovering some ideas from others that you squirrel away and then eventually you, you use them? I mean, those are things you all got to decide, obviously. Sort of a philosophical question is, is why can't your inspiration come from the work itself? You know, if you just sit down and just start doing it, aren't you going to inspire yourself? Aren't you going to motivate yourself to, to keep going? You know, you're already there. You're already putting the effort. And so if you're just, if you just finally sit down and just get at it and you, you, you log the time, aren't you going to inspire yourself in the process? Uh, maybe. I mean, I think that sounds, that sounds reasonable. That sounds like a, uh, a path that will lead to something. I think depending on your, your journey, I think you, you're probably going to need all of that. I think you're going to probably need a little bit of spark. And so that spark can very well come from, from within, totally from within you, where you just, you're just like, man, I've got this, I've got this burning idea and I've just got to get it out. And so I'm going to sit down and I'm going to do it. And it's, it's not triggered by, you know, reading some great work of literature or, or, you know, some other source. I mean, you know, heck, it could be a comedian that sort of motivates you to write some great tragedy. Who knows, right? There's, you know, people take ideas in and they, they concoct them and they, they work them out in their, their minds in their own way. So that's, you know, that's one way you just sit down, you just get to it. The other, you know, as you, you do some reading, you, you know, you read the masters, you, you get a feel for, you know, for their technique and some things that work and it helps clarify uh, a process and an approach that may work for you as well. And you're just using 
them as a starting point. You know, he's sort of standing on the, the shoulder of legends, if you will. Uh, I think, you know, think about the movie Finding Forrester, uh, the young man, the high school basketball player who had befriended uh, Sean Connery's character, the, you know, the aging writer that was living off his royalties and hadn't written a book in like, you know, 50 years or something like that. And, and Connery gives, um, I forget the actor's name. I can, I can visualize him right now. Um, great, you know, great actor, handsome kid. Um, but he, you know, he gives him some of his past work to read, gives him license to use it as a starting point. And once he uses that as just a little bit of spark, he just goes off on his own and he writes this amazing work. And the master of the school that he's at is like, there's no way in hell you wrote this. You must have plagiarized it. It looks just like this other guy's work. And, you know, Sean Connery steps in and says, nope, you're right. He did start with a little bit of my work and I gave him the rights to do that. I gave him the authorization to take that path. But what happened from there is his own creation. You know, I merely served as a little bit of inspiration and gave him a little bit of fuel to get going. And from there he took off and, and went on his own. And I think that's a lot of us. I think a lot of us have a desire to do something. And that desire leads us to do a little bit of research, some observation, some thinking, uh, you know, some cribbing of techniques and tools and even words of, of others that have come before us and have already put out some great work. And we learn from them. We, we learn we learn how to do it. We learn a way, and then we add our own, our own technique, our own words. We bring in other, you know, inspirations, other motivations. You know, there's always got to be something pushing you. There's always got to be some kind of motivating factor. You know, and it's, it sounds awesome to say, well, just being alive is my motivation, and there's nothing else beyond that. You know, I don't need anything else. I don't, I don't need anybody to give me a spark. And, you know, that sounds tough and it sounds brave and bold. And, and maybe it's true for some people and maybe it's true for you at any given point. But I think, again, I think we all have those moments where to create something, uh, we, need, we need a little bit of a spark. We need, we need some inspiration. You know, we need a flicker. Uh, I know for me, like coming out and doing walks, I, I happen to be traveling for company business and, and going through uh, uh, Camp Verde, Arizona, just kind of you know, sort of mid north, if you will, you know, between uh, uh, Phoenix and Sedona, roughly. Behind me is the Verde River, and, and I walked down here this morning. I thought, wow, that's a, that's a beautiful sight. You know, I, I just got out here, it was still kind of dark. The sunrise came up. You see the colors behind me uh, uh, flickering off the water. And, you know, that's that's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. And, and I don't know what I'll do with the the images of my mind or, or even the, you know, the pictures I took this morning. I don't know what I'll do with that. But at some point, you know, this experience this morning will, will kind of tumble out of me. And it, and it might just be to inspire me to take my son fishing, uh, you know, later on in the summer, um, possibly, you know, even this winter, cause we get some, we get some warming effects in the winter time. It's Arizona after all. Um, but it may inspire me to do something with him. And then that, you know, that trip will, it'll, it'll create a bond and it'll do something for him. It'll do something for me. And we're creating something together. We're creating moments and memories. Um, and, here I, we may create some actual work. There may be some, some work that comes from that as well. You know, he's kind of a budding uh, playwright. He's actor. He's, you know, so who knows, you know, who knows what all the things that, that build up in his mind from his experiences and, and our conversations do for him d down the line uh, and vice versa. You know, I get a lot of I get a lot of inspiration from him. I mean, he's he's an amazing source of of, of spark, 
a motivation for me to, to do well and, and give him a better example. Uh, he's a source of, of inspiration and ideas for me of, you know, what am I learning from him that I can actually employ in, in my business and uh, some of the creative things that I, that I do do. I, you know, I do some short writing on uh, Substack and, and things like that. Um, I get, I get interesting tidbits from he and I's conversations, just, you know, taking him places and, and getting him to his activities, things like that. So he's an amazing source of, of inspiration for me, but I'm also living, living a life with him and we're doing stuff. Uh, and so those experiences give, you know, give me ideas and give me sparks as much as sitting down and, and reading you know, reading a, a work of fiction or, you know, or some business literature or whatever, right? Um, I'm, you know, I'm kind of, I guess I'm kind of weird in a way. I get, you know, I get some, I get some interesting ideas from reading regulations at times. Uh, you know, what can we do with that? How, how might this apply to something else that we're wrestling with, even though it's not a requirement? Uh, there's some good stuff here. There's some good practice that's actually embedded in these regulations. So you get you get that from all avenues if your if your mind's open, if you're not always on the lookout for it, but you're just receptive to it. And when it comes, your 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 mind is present enough to to take note of it and, and record it in some way. Uh, that's something I, you know, I'm always trying to get better at doing, you know, always, always trying to remember to write down something I see or, you know, record it or, you know, this thing that I'm recording this video on right now is great for that. I take a lot of notes. So that's part of the doing, right? If you, if you never do that, then you're, you're never going to produce any work from your inspirations, uh, or, or something that motivates you. Just like if all you do is record those things, you, you know, if you if you never do anything but just sort of catalog them and store them up, then it's not useless. I mean, you do, you know, you did, you did have a moment with it, but you haven't evolved it. Um, maybe it's not its time, right? And that's why I think it's important to to do that cataloging, to be that observant. You may not be able to do something with it in the moment, and you maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you really need to to put it away for a while, revisit it, you know, pair it up with other ideas. I mean, that's all part of a process that may produce some kind of work, or you may just catch your hair on fire with something and just go right. Again, there's no real right or wrong way to do it in, in the history of of authors and poets and playwrights and you know people that have built businesses they've all taken different approaches you know they've all had different ways that they've gone about things and and they've gotten there and the the probably the the, the key things that's led to producing whatever it is they produced is Yes, their ideas and their commitment to uh, being open to collecting them. That's one thing. Their commitment to doing something with it, whatever process or approach that takes. Their desire to do something that is going to be shaping, changing, could be revolutionary or it could just be, you know, a, a feature that has... Um, you know, some improvement in, in whatever they're working on. But the magnitude is, is always going to be different, right? The, uh, you know, I, I think if you start with just, oh, I want to change the world, you, you, probably, you probably won't get there because, well, what's, what's behind the change? Why, why is it you really want to change the world? What's, what's the meaningful thing that you, you hope to deliver? So that's the other thing, right? So, you know, again, yeah, com be committed to being open and being willing to, to kind of catalog ideas, explore them, put them to use in some way, be committed to doing something meaningful, 
you've got to have the courage to at some point put it out whether that's you know it's taking a a product to a to a group of investors that you're going to need to give you the capital whether it's financial or human or, or additional technologies whatever that looks like um or it's truly building it in your own garage because you've got that ability you know or it's you know it's it's taken the um you know it's it's taken the opportunity to to finally publish that book or what you know whatever it is you're working on you got to have the courage to to put it out and the courage to to kind of live with whatever comes back to you you know i don't know for me speaking i mean that's a lot of times that's where i where i stumble you know i i let i let something get in the way and kind of talk me out of it you know take away my my courage if you will from uh, being willing to just put it out there, you know, it's the, you know, it's kind of the the perfectionist kind of thing. Uh, fortunately, I don't suffer a lot from perfectionism, but I have my moments. Uh, the flip side of that is, you know, sometimes you rush stuff. You know, you just try to get it off your desk and, you know, get it out into the world. You know, and and kind of, you know, all right, fine, here it is. You know, critics, you go take your shots at it, uh, or, you know, reviewer, auditor, whatever it is. Sometimes you're too quick with it, and then what do you do? Well, maybe you get an opportunity to kind of kind of redo it, um, you know, re- rethink your approach, re- rethink your attitude. Sometimes sometimes your attitude sucks in the process of making something, and so you you know you kind of you kind of screw yourself in the in the uh, in the process of doing it. You know, you, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. You're yeah, you know, you're 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 too angry. You're so angry in a way that it's not it's not like good motivation. You know, you're you're just pissed off about something and it and it clouds your judgment and you don't put out something good. But you know, if you've got the courage to take a step back and say, you know, let me give it another shot. But a lot of us, me included, we get you know, we get discouraged from time to time. We're like, well, I'm just not gonna do it. The hell with it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take another swing at it. I've tried twice and I failed twice, uh, and there's just not gonna be any win for me. Sometimes that's the right thing to do, and you just move on, right? You don't. You don't waste your energy. You know. You don't bust your pick, so to speak. Just keeping at it and keeping going and trying to make it work. And then you know, five years gone by, and you could have used that time for something else. Or you really should. You know what? What you were. What you were working on was something that you really were committed to. You really felt there was a lot of uh, a lot of good, a lot of purpose behind it, and it was meaningful to you. And you're not worried about praise or sales or you know market share or whatever it is. Uh, and you just get it out there. I mean, that's a, that's another element. And, and you know, these are these are things that I've been able to catalog from taking in some, you know, some writings uh, over the last year, uh, really ramped up over the last, you know, a couple months, um, just because I, I reached a point where some of my long held beliefs, some of my, you know, practice and process and approach, um, you know, seemed to, to not have the effect that I was looking for. And so I thought, you know, let me, let me take a step back. Let me not rely on so much of myself thinking that I'm like the be and end all authority for what it is I'm trying to do. There's others that have done great things out there that I can learn from. So let me do that. Let me take a pause here. Let me do some study. Let me let me explore some techniques. Let me find some new tools. And then go from there. One of the, the sort of biggest shining examples that I've had lately is I I delivered a course. The idea was uh, I think the the idea was was pretty well conceived and it was a needed uh, it was a needed course for at least a, a small group of people that, that signed up. Uh, the course was put together. I was able to deliver the material as a kind of a live presentation to to one group. Worked on it. Oddly enough, I put some work into it and I got like some, some, some interesting ideas from, you know, some musicians that are respected. And I thought, you know, what these guys are talking about is, is kind of on point with 
my time. And their ideas that fell out or, you know, X, Y, and Z, let me explore those. And so you added those into the content. And then, you know, I, I considered doing a, a different approach than what I had, what I had charted out kind of at the last minute. I mean, I had a little bit of time to prep. Um, I put together what I thought were some good directions, some good instructions for people to prepare themselves and, and, you know, really be ready to be engaged. And then we did the program and, and it wasn't as engaging as it should be. It was confusing. Uh, people didn't get out of it what they necessarily wanted. The, the reviews weren't great. Um, but yet I had some ideas for what I wanted to do afterwards. I typically, when I do these trainings, I, I typically give something to folks afterwards. You know, I'll give them my materials. I'll give them some tools that they can use. Um, you know, I'll give them some, you know, some other things that I, that I think may be beneficial to them. Uh, it's just part of what I do for the course. And, and I, you know, I don't, I don't worry that the course is over with and it's, well, I, it's still going to cost me more time and I'm not going to make any money off that extra time. No, I, I, I got things, I got things that come to me in the course of actually delivering the material at times that I, that I think will help folks. And, and I, I need to spend time after I'm done giving the program to putting that together for them. And so I do it. And so, you know, after this course that just didn't go very well, uh, I mean, I felt, I felt in the moment, I felt, you know, I wasn't doing a very good job conveying uh, the, the, the tools and the process that I was trying to teach. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to take, I'm going to take my notes and I'm going to create a, I'm going to create a, a, a real simple kind of process, uh, you know, memo for them, you know, something to take away. Uh, and then I thought about it even more. I said, you know, I started off, I thought with some good ideas here. The execution of it was terrible the execution of this needed more time and it needed to be fleshed out more and, and delivered in much more of a kind of process oriented fashion and maybe doing it as a, as a webinar approach, wasn't really the best approach for it. Maybe the better approach is to actually evolve this more into, um, you know, a white paper, ebook, you know, whatever. And so that was the idea that I came to after that. And just, you know, I just had to accept the fact that I didn't do a good job delivering the material. I, I did a pretty poor job executing the webinar. And then I got, I got feedback that I should have gotten. The feedback was good. You know, it was helpful. Um, and the thing that I was probably most disappointed was that people weren't satisfied with it. And that's okay. You know, it's okay to hear that people aren't satisfied. Otherwise, how do you know? You know, the worst thing is they don't share at all. They don't, they don't tell you. They just kind of let you feel like, well, yeah, you did okay, right? But that doesn't help you. It doesn't help you move forward. So even, you know, even those things, people's feedback are, are points of inspiration and, and motivation. You know, their feedback might cut so deep that you, that you really get, you know, pissed off and you just, you, you, you just don't proceed. Well, that's on you. You've made that choice to let them derail you, but hopefully what you get out of it is something constructive that you can use that you can then use to go back to your, you know, your workshop, so to speak, and, you know, rebuild the thing and rebuild it better, uh, with, you know, with their feedback, you think of it, you know, think of that first interaction as like a, a focus group or a test group, you know, or it's a, you know, it's a prototype that people got a chance to play around with. They bought it. Look at it that way. And again, it's going to, it's going to drive some new ideas for you. And it's going to give you some inspiration. It's going to give you some motivation to just kind of keep working on it. And at least I hope that's what I get. That's my plan. You know, and I have, I have started on this. It's not something that is, well, maybe I'll get to it someday. It's an active it's an active thing. You know, I've, I've taken, you know, I've taken the work that I did in that webinar. I took, I took the original kind of packaging of it and, you know, started to reconfigure it, but to, again, to kind of flesh it out and give better explanation for where I was going. 
uh, and then it'll have some of the tools I was trying to teach. So this, you know, this is all what I'm talking about and have been now for, you know, what, approaching a half hour. So thanks for sticking with me and, and staying tuned in. But what I'm just what I'm getting at is is process and approach. Part of that process and approach, I believe at least, has got to be some level of inspiration, some level of motivation. The work ultimately has to come from with inside you, from your intentions, from your desire to produce something that's useful to somebody. It maybe it's just you. Maybe you just end up creating something for yourself that you know that helps. But you've created something for somebody to help them. And that creates some level of meaning. You know, it may not change the world, you know, it may not revolutionize anything, but it is helpful, it is useful. And so the you know the the external external things you can collect help you clarify, help you focus, and then you sit down and do the work. And again, that's got to come from within. Like that's where that's where I do kind of buy in that nobody's really going to motivate you or inspire you to to really do something. Uh, they may give you the initial idea or spark, but ultimately you you do have to sit down and and force yourself to do it. Yeah, you know, and sometimes the the work doesn't just tumble out just because you sit down and start working on it. You know, you you may have to you got to kick your own ass a little bit. You've got to you've got to force yourself to do it when you're when you're tired. You don't really want to do it. You've got to you know you've got to stretch yourself and go beyond what you think you can do at times. You got to do all those things. And again, that. That's got to come with inside of you. I mean, chances are you've got nobody that is that awesome around you that's really going to help you out that much to get that work out. Uh, they might be able to help you out once it's done, right? Or it's in a position where it's almost done. You know, a good editor, uh, a good, uh, you know, call it a, a murder board, a writer's room, you know, that kind of a thing for folks, you know, to kind of give you a good critique and, and help kind of get things, you know, put together in a, in a better way. But ultimately that work's got to come from you. And so I, that's the guy where I, I don't depart from anybody that, um, you, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get the level of motivation or inspiration from any, anywhere else to actually get through it. You know, you get, that's gonna have to come with inside of you. Um, you know, you, you, you ultimately, if, if, if you don't sit down and do it, it's never going to get done. It's always just going to be a concept and an idea. So, you know, there's sort of these worrying concepts. Uh, people deliver their thoughts about those words, motivation, inspiration, commitment, those kind of things. But ultimately, what, you know, what does matter is that you you do put something out. You, you just sit down and, and get to work and, and do, you know, do the things you need to do, put in the effort you need to do, uh, and give it the time that it, that it needs to get out there in the world. Uh, hopefully my, you know, my thoughts, sharing of some of my failures are, are, are helpful. Maybe it gives you some ideas. Like you can't do it for me. I, I can't do it for you. Um, and so I, I hope you do do it for yourself. And, you know, I hope you give me a little bit of encouragement wherever you are as well. Encouragement's a good thing. And uh, keep at it. Thanks very much.